All right, you guys. What's up? Uh, it's me, Darth Call. This is going to be a different kind of video than the ones I've done before. I'm going to talk about The Lone Ranger starring Johnny Depp and how I edited that film to, in my opinion, make it a much better movie. Uh, this is just my opinion, of course. Um, but in my opinion, the theatrical cut had a, a lot of problems. The movie was bloated in its runtime. Uh, the movie hopped around all over the place instead of having a beginning and a middle and an end. Uh, and in my opinion, the movie just got in its own way at the end of the day. And for whatever reason that happened, that happened. I'm not really blaming anyone specifically for it because when you look at the cast, I mean, the cast is all very talented actors. Again, Johnny Depp. It's directed by Gore Verbinski, who had an enormously successful collaboration with Johnny Depp on Pirates of the Caribbean with his trilogy. Uh, Hans Zimmer did the score, so obviously it's top tier music. They spent, I think, $250 million, and you can see it uh, visually because the costumes are incredible, the set pieces are incredible, the cinematography is absolutely amazing to look at. I mean, it's eye candy when you see these like majestic, sweeping shots of the Wild West out there in Utah. It's It really is a beautiful movie. So it was hard for me to understand why I didn't like it at first. I turned it off when I first started watching it. And I came to the conclusion there was a couple of problems with the movie. Like I just said before, it was bloated in its runtime. Um, it kept pausing and then jumping into the future and then rewinding and starting the movie again and then pausing and playing and pausing and playing and pausing. And they would stop this adventure and you would flash forward 30 or 40 years in the future where Tonto's really, really old and he's talking to this kid in a museum. And no disrespect to the actor that's the kid in the museum, but those scenes don't work in the movie, in my opinion. So that was a really big issue. Another big issue I had with the movie was they made the protagonist kind of unlikable. Uh, he, he keeps making jokes and failing. He's always doing these hammy, marvely Disney jokes. And he's interested in his dead brother's widow. And Disney made that a really big focal point in the movie. This This weird romantic subplot, which was awful, in my opinion. It's just... It made me not like him at all. So I set about to remove the creepy, weird uh, romance subplot. That's gone. I got rid of the kid scenes in the museum. So the movie never stops and starts. You just have a beginning, you have a middle, and you have an end. And that's all there is to it. That was a big issue, I think. Uh, and then there was just a lot of humor. And the movie commented on itself and would wink at the audience and it would want to have these inside jokes with the audience without even having really earned that. They just automatically want you to be in on the joke and the movie would sit around watching itself instead of moving on to the next scene, which is a, a real problem for, for storytelling, you know? Once the scene's over, we move on to the next scene. We don't linger and laugh and joke and nudge each other and, you know, it's just... There was a lot of that in the movie. Again, all just my opinion, but I got rid of all of that as well. So, got rid of all the museum scenes, got rid of the creepy romantic subplot, and made a, a lot less jokey, uh, winky, Disney, marvel jokes. Got rid of those as well, which in my opinion elevated the stakes of the movie and made it a little bit more serious. So when you do have humor, it's nice and you laugh, but you are still really invested in this story. Themes of the film. Number one, we have time, functionality, and corruption. Two, we have nature and balance. Three, justice and vengeance. Four, faith and spirituality. Five, family and friendship. Six, greed and power. Uh, the symbols in the film, there's a bunch. Uh, crows obviously represent death. Trains represent control and power. Silver represents greed and spirits. Pocket watches represent time and functionality and corruption. The ranger badge represents justice and family. And Rebecca's scarf, I think, means love and beauty. It's the aquamarine scarf, which is what Gore Verbinski, I'm guessing, gave her to carry throughout the movie. The colors focused on in this movie are white, silver, and, like we just said, aquamarine. A couple of fun facts before we get into the specific changes. Number one, Kimosabe means friend, but Tonto tells John that it means wrong brother. Wrong brother. Uh, so that, to me, tells me that Tonto is fond of John, but likes to troll him, which I think is nice. It's funny. Tonto means silly in Spanish. Uh, now, I'm going to go over why 
the spirit horse is the protagonist's older brother who dies dan reed that's the older brother uh it's it's pretty amazing when i was editing this i was like oh wow the horse is his big bro that's so cool number one he points out the spirit horse to john in act one and explains what indians think a spirit horse is remember in act one he, you'd have to have seen the movie but he goes see that that's your spirit horse takes you to the other side so he's already pointing out the spirit horse to john as they're going to catch cavendish uh, number two he paused at the badge he gave john reed so the horse paused at the badge which is their father's silver badge which again represents justice and family right so that's a hint that it's his brother right there number three the spirit horse saves rebecca from death when she falls off the train in the third act she she gets let go off the train and she'd be dead but boom spirit horse was right there to save her it's because it's his wife number four he drops john's white hat at the foot of his grave so when Tonto's burying everybody and he's trying to bury our protagonist who isn't quite dead yet, the spirit horse lays down the hat uh, at his grave's foot. And it's the same hat that he poked fun at his brother with. He's like, nice hat. Didn't have a bigger one. So again, another reference to the brother's interactions. Uh, number five, he finds Rebecca and she sees him when she looks out the train window. So the spirit horse tracks down Rebecca and she sees him and she's just wondering, who is this random horse outside my window? It's because it's his... It's his wife number six he protects john reed just like dan reed protected john so dan tries to give him a gun when they're going in act one to uh, to go catch cavendish he's trying to protect his brother arm yourself you know this guy's going to try and kill us here's a gun uh when john falls down and his horse pins him to the ground dan reed goes back for him and saves his life he dies doing this but again he's protecting his younger brother and then you see the same thing happen with the spirit horse spirit horse is always there to help him saves him he's on the burning roof and he rescues him from the burning barn uh he pulls him out of the ground when he's buried up to his neck and he only really responds to our protagonist john he doesn't really take orders from tonto so this horse is obsessed with john and rebecca it's got to be dan reed uh number seven he's white just like the white handkerchief that butch cavendish wipes his mouth with after he eats dan reed's heart so he eats dan reed's heart and then the bad guy wipes his mouth on this really clean white napkin. And then the spirit horse is that same color. Number eight, uh, John criticizes Dan for wearing Indian jewelry and telling ghost stories. It's clear that Dan has become more spiritual since John left for law school. You know, there's been a lot of time apart for these brothers. And when our protagonist, John, comes back to town, home, uh, he notices that his older brother's maybe a little bit more spiritual, wearing the Indian jewelry, which was also a an agreement with the comanche to uh maintain the peace number nine he appears in the story right after dan dies and he has no interest in dan's grave so this horse only wants to help john number 10 the horse drinks beer something dan reed a cowboy would do that's a pretty human behavior for a horse uh, 11 tonto remarks that he wishes the great father had sent dan reed to help instead of john reed this is funny because the great father did send dan reed back to help tonto but just in horse form. So little joke on Tonto. Number 12, Silver doesn't obey Tonto. He only is loyal to John and only goes out of his way for John. Uh, 13, ghosts are white. And one of Butch Cavendish's gang even says to Cavendish, uh, you shouldn't have done what you did. The ghost of Dan Reed comes for you. So white horse, ghosts, it's Dan Reed, yo. That's pretty crazy. So now let's get into the, the meat of it. I'm going to explain to you every specific change that I made to the movie and why I did it and why I think it makes the movie better. Uh, like I already told you guys, I got rid of all of the, the museum scenes with the kid. It's just we need to have a movie start at the beginning, go into the middle part, and then go to the end, and that's it. You know, you, you want to experience the story with these characters and be on the journey with them you're in it you're not watching the movie you're experiencing the movie second to second with everybody else so those were all gone uh i initially removed the child tonto flashback that the comanche chief tells our protagonist in the tp but i actually put it back in i, I didn't mind it so much even though it's a flashback it, it does explain a lot it doesn't take up a lot of time and so i kept it in there because eh, it was pretty good Number three, I've removed the bizarre romance subplot. We already talked about that. So any scene that references John Reed having the hots for his older brother's wife is gone. Any interactions between them that's romantic is gone. I don't care what it was. I got rid of it. Uh, so it becomes a story about family, a, a story about a brother helping his big bro, avenging his big brother, of a, a younger brother looking out for his nephew and his sister-in-law. Family. It's a lot more positive 
and I think I'm a much better story than what Disney did with the creepy romance. Number five, I made it so the movie starts at the beginning, stays there, progresses to the middle, and has an end. We went over that. Number six, I cut out John Reed's corny opening scene where he tries to make the, where he accidentally makes the kid cry by throwing a, the doll out the window. Again, just like needless, silly, marvelly joke. I got rid of it. So our initial introduction to John is him being suspicious of people on the train, people walking on top of the train. He's concerned. He's a concerned good Samaritan. He's not goofing around. He's not looking at a photo of Rebecca. That stuff's gone. Number seven, I cut out the Asian woman making eye contact with Cole when she's giving Rebecca that scarf in the uh, beginning of the movie. They make it really obvious that she works with Cole and she's one of the bad guys because she makes this ridiculous eye contact with him like while she's getting Rebecca to take the scarf from her. So I cut that part out. So when you find out in the third act that she's working with Cole, it's more of a surprise. You don't know it at first because they really spell it out way too much in the beginning. Number eight, I shortened Cole and Rebecca's opening interaction in the opening of the movie because it just makes that scene go faster. Number nine, I removed the scene where John Reed meets up with Rebecca for the first time in years. So they have this big scene together right when John gets into town and Tonto gets put in jail. And then they have this moment where they reconnect from when they they obviously liked each other a lot back in the day. Uh, that whole scene is gone. Not necessary to the story. We move on to hunting down Butch Cavendish because, again, no creepy romance. Number 10, I tightened up the scene where John Reed stops Tonto from shooting Cavendish on the train in Act 1 so it doesn't showcase a lot of overacting. So sometimes, like I talked about before, they they linger and comment on their own jokes, and that was happening on that part where Tonto tries to grab him, but the chains stop him from reaching, grabbing our protagonist, John. And then John does some hammy reaction. Number 11, I put the scene of Rebecca's farm getting raided by the fake Indians before the brothel scene. So in the brothel scene, all the settlers hate Tonto and want to kill him, and it's confusing to the viewer. Why do they want to kill him? What did he do? And it's because supposedly Comanche have been raiding settlements and killing the settlers. So they hate him. But we don't see the settlements get raided until after that. So I put Rebecca's farm getting raided first. And then we go to the brothel scene. And then it makes a whole lot more sense why all the settlers really don't like the Comanche Tonto. Much better. 12, I tightened up the scene where Dan Reed whips the outlaw off the train so it happens in a much faster way. Again, this scene, these movie, this movie comments on itself and you see every character react individually to the whip going around the bad guy's leg and then he gets pulled off. Like, how long is this guy riding next to the train with this whip attached to his leg before he pulls it? You know what I mean? You would just pull it. So instead of watching things happen slowly, things just happen like they would in real life. Much better. Uh, let's see. I removed John Reed's line about boxing in law school in the beginning of the movie. Because he goes, I have to warn you, I boxed in law school. And then he gets hit in the face. Too too much uh, campiness, too much of a marvel joke, so I got rid of that. And then you see him roll his sleeves up still, though. So in the third act, when Cavendish goes, don't tell me you boxed in law school. And then he punches him and he goes, as a matter of fact, I did. You still have that callback. You're not assuming your audience is dumb they remember him rolling up his sleeves in the beginning it makes sense by the third act because oh well it's because he took some boxing in law school there you go you don't have to spell it out for the audience so much 14 i tightened up the train crash in the opening act so it happens a lot faster again they watch this metal beam fly at them for like 30 seconds it makes no sense why wouldn't they get out of the way wouldn't you be scrambling to move if you were watching this huge metal beam flying at you, going to kill you? Of course you would get out of the way. In my version, the train crash happens so fast, there is no time to react. Things just happen. They don't watch stuff flying at them. They experience it happen, and they're like, wow, I'm glad I'm not dead. Much better. Number 15, I cut out the scene of Dan Reed's son watching Tonto pray and chant in his jail cell. Number 16, I used the footage of Tonto praying in the jail as a way to explain him escaping jail. So... In the Disney theatrical cut, there's no explanation for how Tonto escapes jail. It's bizarre. In my version, I use him chanting and praying, and you see the shadow of the bird on his head kind of like flying up in the jail cell. I use that as a, a means of explaining Tonto's up to something. He's doing something in that jail cell. Maybe he's activating some magical spiritual bird powers to uh, get it to get the keys off of the desk and help him escape. There's an attempt to explain it, as opposed to Disney's version, which has no explanation. And to back up what I'm saying, because I know it's a little absurd, how did the bird fly in the thing? 
Later on in the movie, when they're in the uh, silver mine, that bird is not dead in the silver mine. It's flying around pecking people, so it can move around uh, when it's got the proper spiritual charges, because that spirit mine is where the river begins. That's where the spirits are strongest, right? Silver is a, a theme for spirits and greed in this movie. So there's my explanation for how Tonto gets out of jail and tracks them down. 18, I tightened up the scene of uh, the eight rangers tracking down Butch Cavendish and spliced in Tonto escaping jail. 19, I cut out the awkward bit of Dan Reed explaining to John as he's dying how his wife always loved him and to take care of him or her. This is super bizarre. So as Dan Reed's dying, he has a scene where he talks to John. He's like, she always loved you, man. Take care of her for me, okay? It's so weird. I'm like, no, that's, that's not in the movie. He's just going to try and save his brother's life. There's none of this bizarre bullshit. Uh, 20, I cut out the ridiculous close-up CGI of the were-rabbit. So there's the cannibal rabbits, right? And Tonto tosses them a piece of rabbit meat, and then they go to this really ridiculous close-up of one of the rabbits making this horror movie, like, growl, and then they all eat the rabbit. I cut that CGI close-up part out, so it just looks like a bunch of rabid rabbits, you know, fighting over a piece of flesh. It's It makes a little more sense. It's a little more realistic and not so cartoony. 21, I shortened Tonto's joke about wishing it was Dan Reed and not John Reed helping him on his spirit quest. 22, I shortened Tonto's bird angry line. So John slaps him and he goes, why did you do that? Or Tonto slaps John, excuse me, and John goes, what was that for? And he goes, bird angry. In mine, I, he just points at his bird and says, bird. And that's it. 23, I removed Tonto's what does the white man kill for? So there's a couple of lines like that. There's a bunch of lines about the white man in this movie that I keep. A couple of times it felt like it was Hollywood uh, just being political and divisive and kind of just shitting on white dudes. So if it felt like one of those lines, I got rid of it. It wasn't many, but there was like one or two. Uh, it just takes you out of it and makes you feel like you're watching a freaking political rally or a debate uh, for president in 2020 or 2016. It's just, you know, we all want to get away and have some escapism and watch a fun cowboy movie. And so if it felt like that fucked with it, I got rid of it. 24, tightened up Tonto and Reed approaching the barn to save the Mexican woman from the gang member who likes to wear pretty dresses. 25, I removed the what's with the mask line. So in this movie, like we just talked about earlier, it always does these inside jokes and it just wants to hammer those jokes to death. So what's with the mask is this recurring joke where everyone questions the Lone Ranger. What's with the mask? What's with the mask? No one takes them seriously. You're so silly. You're so dumb, Lone Ranger. Now that joke is funny a couple of times. When every character in the damn movie says it to him, it's stupid and it makes me not like the movie and it makes the Lone Ranger a douchebag. So I kept it in the brothel when she, she just genuinely asks him, what's with the mask? Because it's a fair question to ask. That one stayed. And there's one other that stayed that I kept. Oh, the Comanche chief. He's like, what's with the mask? He doesn't get why he's wearing a mask. Both of those were funny. But when you make it so that it happens five more times outside of those two times, all of them become not funny. And you just roll your eyes and go, oh, great. This joke. Again. So I didn't get rid of all of them, but I took out all of the ones that were annoying and stupid. 27, I improved the bank robbery scene by using footage from the beginning of the movie. 28, I removed the gag about Reed accidentally shooting Tonto's crow's head. There's a whole bit where he shoots the the crow by accident uh, on Tonto's head, and then they have a whole gag bit, you know, like, what, what, what are you looking at? Oh, nothing, it's, uh, I didn't just shoot your bird's head. Like, there's this whole silly, marvelly joke. That whole thing's gone. You just see it happen, and it's funny, and you don't comment on it. Again, this movie comments on itself incessantly. Oh, okay, this is an important one. So, when they're in the barn... Uh, Tonto's like, go for the horse, Kimosabe. I cover you. And then John's like, no, you, dude. I have the gun. You go. And he's like, but you are spirit walker. Been to the other side. Cannot be killed in battle. At this point in time, Tonto does not believe that he's the spirit walker. He's just convincing him because he doesn't want to risk his skin getting shot running out there. So then John goes, all right, fine. Texas Ranger. And he holds up his badge. You're under arrest. And then they shoot at him like a hundred times like a hundred times, and he doesn't get shot once. And Johnny Depp stares at him in amazement, like, holy shit, you're actually the freaking Spirit Walker. And then he says in the script, Spirit Walker. You don't need to say it. 
It was in his eyes when he looks in astonishment, like, I expected you to get shot a hundred times, and you didn't get nicked once. You see in his eyes, oh damn, he is the spirit walker. You don't need to hit the audience over the head by actually saying it. And there's this whole joke bit at that part. Uh, again, very gaggy, very uh, marvelly. I got rid of it. You just see him stare in amazement. It just moves a lot faster. The stakes remain higher. It's better. Uh, I removed the joke about the horses can fly and don't be stupid. So when they get on the, the roof of the burning barn, there's a horse up there. It's his brother, Silver. And John goes, horses can fly? It's such a stupid line. And then Tonto's like, don't be stupid. I got rid of all of that. It's such a bad joke. They just enjoy seeing that a horse is inexplicably up on the burning roof and then they escape. It's great. 31. I cut the short clip of the gang member approaching Cavendish's camp after witnessing the barn shootout. 32. I removed the dialogue between Tonto and Reed about impregnating Rebecca. So when they're tracking that horse and the horse dies in the desert in the middle of the movie, there's a whole discussion between Tonto and John about how John had a spirit vision and in that spirit vision he was really romantically attached to his brother's wife rebecca remember this whole thing we talked about they have a whole dialogue about him putting a baby inside of her creepy creepy he's just trying to rescue his nephew dude and his sister-in-law he's trying to avenge his big brother why do you put this gross subplot into the movie it's like this terrible soap opera subline we don't need it or subplot we don't need it it's gone 33 I removed John Reed getting an itchy nose and hamming it up for the camera. So when they bury them up to their neck, uh, Tonto goes, could be worse, could get itch on your nose. And then John Reed, oh, uh -huh, he gets an itch on his nose. And then we watch him get an itch on his nose for five minutes. Nope, it's cut, stupid, we move on. Uh, then when Silver shows up to drop the reins so that John can catch the reins with his teeth and get out of the, uh, the hole that he's buried up to his neck in, there's a whole joke gag about him not being able to quite catch the reins with his teeth and Tonto's hamming it up next to him, making chomping motions with his teeth. I got rid of all of that. It really doesn't help the movie in, in mine. Silver walks up, drops the reins. He catches it on the first attempt and pulls him out because it's his brother and he's trying to help him. He's not trolling him here. 36, I removed the boring montage speech Cole makes as they're saying grace over dinner. So there's this whole montage of the Lone Ranger riding off in the night as he's trying to get to Cole. And he's saying grace over dinner with Rebecca and uh, her son. This is a really boring scene. It doesn't accomplish anything. The plot doesn't move forward. It's just a waste of one to two minutes. So I cut that whole thing out. It was pretty boring. We move on. Uh, 38, uh, I added the opening bank robbery scene of the film after the slaughter of the Comanche tribe. So it fits better when Tonto says, that is why you wear the mask. After act two... When Tonto tells John, that is why you wear the mask, he then holds up the mask, right? I then cut to a scene that's originally in the beginning of the movie, but in mine, it's going into the third act where it actually makes sense. So you see him actually put the mask back on after throwing it away. It, it works a lot better, trust me. You'll see it if you watch my version. 39, I cut the scene of the horse standing in the tree. 40, uh, I made it so the bridge explodes on the first attempt in the theatrical cut. They do not successfully blow the bridge up on the first attempt because when they duck and cover and put their fingers in their ears preparing for the explosion, it then cuts to the boring museum scene with the kid and old man Tonto. Nope. In mine, they light that fuse. That bridge explodes. The scene ends. The movie continues. I removed the scene of Cavendish asking Rebecca uh, what it is about her that gets the Reed boys so hot under the collar. It insinuates that John likes her, so that scene's gone. Again, no romance. I got rid of her uh, kissing him on the horse. It, like, that's just not in the movie, man. She she gets pushed off the train faster in my version because he, he, he basically says, go ahead, push her off the train. And then Cavendish pushes her off the train. So later on when John saves her and she falls, or he, he falls on the horse and she's already there, she slaps him. And then there's no kiss. She just slaps him because he pushed her off a train. I'd slap you too. It makes a lot more sense. And it's not creepy. Uh, I removed Reed's easy line when Cavendish has him at gunpoint in the final act. I removed Rebecca's line of I told you he'd come for me to Cole. I got rid of that. Again, there's that romance stuff. I cut the runtime down from 2 hours and 20 minutes to a galloping 1 hour and 56 minutes. So a big note for me was the movie needs to gallop, not trot. So that's what I made it do. I made the protagonist a lot more likable. 
which is necessary for a film to succeed. He's just a good brother, and he doesn't have these silly jokes that make him unlikable, because his jokes aren't funny. The jokes that Disney makes him do are not funny. At least, not in my opinion, makes him more unlikable. So I got rid of all of it, and you kind of root for the guy in my version. Well, not kind of, you do. He's awesome. That's about it. Um, a couple of notes really quick before I wrap up. I think the movie was not well received. Number one, because it wasn't well executed, but also this movie is incredibly critical of the government. This movie is incredibly critical of the uh, American army and the military industrial complex. There are, it's critical of corruption at the highest levels. Like when we talk about how one of the themes was corruption, right? And functionality and time. The pocket watch represents corruption. When they, when they give that watch to Cole, there's these big fat cats, right? The big fat cats in the third act with the big top hats and they're always drinking champagne. It's the, uh, the elites, the elitists, right? They are portrayed as elite. They basically rake in the money off the backs of the 99%. They actually make fun of the everyday worker. He makes a comment. He's like, uh, the thanks is for all of your hard work. And it shows all these drunk workers that are poor and drinking beer and happy to just be there. So they reference corruption in that way. And then one of the fat cats at the end of the movie tries to give the gold watch to the Lone Ranger. And uh, he's like, always good to have a, a lawman on the side of progress, AKA we'll keep giving you money. You keep looking the other way. So there's corruption in that regard. There's corruption in the government. There's corruption of the American army massacring the Comanche. So that's another reason why I kind of think the reviews might have been extra harsh on, on this movie is because it had legit criticisms of corruption throughout our country. So I can see I can see it not being popular uh, with certain entities. If you know what I mean, and I think you do. The pocket watch also represents functionality because, you know, Tonto's watch is broken and he's broken inside as a person. By the end of the movie, his watch works. He gets that new gold one. It represents how his soul has been fixed or his his person has been fixed and he's a, a functioning human being again. That's nice. The silver, the silver represents greed. So Cole, the brother of Cavendish, dies buried literally by his own greed because he's buried by the silver, right? Which represents greed, but also spirits. So the spirits kind of came back to get him. Honestly, I think, I think Gore Verbinski put this in if I was to guess, but Again, the silver represents spirits and represents greed. Uh, so the silver came from the very spiritual valley where the river begins. So he's buried not only by his greed, but also by the spirits that he unsettled all those years ago when he massacred the Comanche tribe, Tonto's Comanche tribe, uh, which I think is a nice little button on the whole movie there. Um, also, another way to back up my idea that silver represents spirits is dan reed is the spirit horse and his name is literally silver i rest my case <laughs> uh, family and friendship obviously is a huge theme um the silver badge their father's badge also represents justice and uh, the last change i made was at the very end he goes hi ho silver away and then tonto goes don't ever do that again like it was the cringiest thing he'd ever seen and it was kind of like a reprimand of Lone Ranger like how dare you embrace being Lone Ranger we tolerate you Lone Ranger don't don't put it in everyone's face don't enjoy being you it, it seemed really negative so I got rid of that um and that was a note from a friend of mine but I thought about it and I'm like that makes a lot of sense so in my version it just goes hi ho silver away and then it boom it cuts to credits and exciting music and the movie's over I think it's a lot better that way so one more joke removed. Obviously the trains represent control over everything in the country. Yeah, that's about it. I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Guys, I hope you liked the video. Uh, feel free to like it if you liked it. And hopefully I can have some more fun videos like this for you guys in the future. If you wanna watch the movie, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to my Discord. And then you can just hop in the Discord and hit me up on Twitter, hit me up in my actual Discord and say, hey, I want to see the call cut. 
of the Lone Ranger, and I'll set up a showing time for you in the Discord, and you can watch it. How does that sound? And then I can, you can give me your feedback. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.